<laughs> Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm only nine years old, and I'm going to show you how easy this is. Hey, my name is Jet. I'm only nine years old, and I can do it better than that girl. You're going to need some acetone, which we give you $15 for, two quarts of glue. The container may look a little different than that. You need about four of these brushes, which you can get at Home Depot. Two jars, one about three or four inches tall and the other much taller. You need about four safety blades or a sharp pair of scissors. You need a roll of duct tape. You can get the latex rubber gloves at the pharmacy department at Walmart. An inexpensive iron, which you can also get at Walmart. Some paper towels would be nice to wipe up your mess. You can use some of the spring type clamps or you can use uh, masking tape. Now we're going to start by putting some acetone into the bottom of the big jar. and This is to soak your brushes in. Then we take the small jar and we put a little bit of glue in there. Just enough that you're going to use for that day. And then you're going to mix it 50-50 with acetone. Now if it turns out to be too thin because of your weather conditions or altitude, whatever, then mix it with a little more glue so it's thicker. Say a 60% glue to 40% acetone mixture. But you want it to be thicker rather than thinner. Now when you finish with that, you're going to have the large jar to soak your brushes in. You can have one soaking while you're using the other one. And then you'll have some glue ready to go in the small jar. Don't mix up any more than you need at any one time. Now you're going to start with the first side of a tailpiece. You're going to break off pieces of masking tape and cover the gussets and the heads of the rivet to make them appear a little smoother after you put the fabric on. Now once you finish the first side, you turn the piece over and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. This is just for cosmetic purposes. It's not rocket science. Now remember, this is a nine-year-old girl. She's never seen fabric before. So you can see how easy it is for her to do the first time. Now you take a piece of fabric that's at least an inch and a half bigger all the way around than the piece you're going to cover. And then lay the piece on top of the fabric. This same principle applies for all of the control surfaces, even your ailerons and flaps if you have flaps and so forth. Now she's going to go around the perimeter and glue to the tubes on the outside of the perimeter. You don't have to glue to the tubes within that area, just the outside. So think of the piece that you're going to cover as a picture frame with four sides and you're going to attach the fabric to all four sides. Now you can see how she pushes it down into the glue to get good saturation. When she starts doing the fabric on the other side, she's going to pull the fabric tighter to take out about 90% of the slack in the middle area there. Now you can see her pulling that. So you want to get about 90% of the slack out of the fabric. Not all of it because you're going to iron it. And when you iron it, there has to be a little bit of slack in there so that it can shrink.
So you can see there's only about 10% of the slack left in there. However, she's now on the third side of that picture frame, if you will. So she's going to pull the fabric tighter, which she just did. And you can see that center area is tighter than it was a moment ago. And then when she gets to the other end, the fourth side of the picture frame, then she's going to pull it tighter. And there she is at the, uh, at the far inboard end. And she's taking out some slack. So you want to get about 90% of the slack out. Now it's time to get the iron about 375 degrees, no hotter, just 375 degrees. This will shrink the fabric and keep it tight so it always stays tight and it doesn't get loose. If you don't bring the fabric up to that same temperature as the iron, 375 degrees, then in the colder weather it may start getting loose. Uh, or just over time in general it may start getting loose. So you'll see that she's ironing very slowly. And the reason she's doing it slowly is to give the fabric a chance to get as hot as the iron so that it brings the fabric up to 375 degrees. Now some people like to go in stages. They like to iron the fabric at 250 and then 275 and then three and a quarter and then 375. We say, and the way we've been doing it for 20 years, just go right straight to the 375 degrees the first time. It always works. Now, after you do the bulk of the fabric, you want to come around the edges of the tubes and get those areas ironed down. There may be some wrinkles or some folds. Now she's taken another piece of fabric and she's laid it out and she's turned the piece that she just covered over so she can cover the other side. Now you don't want to have too much overlap on this second side. Now the first side you could wrap the excess fabric around the tube and it will never be seen, whatever leftover fabric you have. But now when you turn it over and you do the other side, now the excess fabric is going to show on the outside of this side of the fabric. Now there is a way to fix that and we're going to do that as part of the standard procedure and that's called using the finishing tapes also known as uh, fabric tapes and so forth. Um, they're going to go around that area and we will show you how to do that and they will cover those raw edges of the fabric so that it looks real nice and they are strictly for cosmetic purposes and you will see how they are applied in a moment. Now you can blow on the glue too and it'll dry faster. In fact, if it's not sticking really well when you push the fabric down into the glue, then go ahead and push down on it and blow on it at the same time. And get close to it like she's doing too so that the air that you're blowing on there will actually have some effect. So you can make it dry real quickly while you're holding it down in place. Now you want to go back and use a pencil shaped soldering iron and poke a hole through the fabric where all the holes have been pre-drilled by the factory so that you'll be able to get the bolts in there. Now we're getting ready to do the finishing tape also known as seam tape and fabric tape. It's got three different names for it. That's a three inch wide piece. She's going to mark the center of it which is one and a half inches. And you'll see why in just a moment we want to get the center of that piece. We're going to use that as a sample Now she's going to put that line that she just made on the very center of that tube so she can see where the fabric tape is going to come to when she puts it on that side. Now she's going to make another mark. You have to put two marks on each side. Then you're going to take a straight edge and you're going to draw a straight line between those two marks.
Now when you put the finishing tape on, it's only going to be nice and straight on one side, and that's going to be the top side. So you have to decide which side of the piece you've just covered is going to be the top and which one's going to be the bottom. So as you are working with the top, you're going to be able to glue the finishing tape right along that line. The line is going to be your guide, and you can glue that uh, finishing tape, fabric tape, seam tape, right along that line, real nice and straight. Now she's doing the other side of that picture frame. You're going to have to do all four ends, or all four sides of the piece, whichever you're doing, whether it's an aileron or a flap or the rudder or the vertical stabilizer. Okay, now she's going to draw that line. You can see the line that she's already drawn on, on one side there. In fact, you can see it on the other side too if you look carefully. So on the top side of the piece, the finishing tape is going to be nice and straight and it's going to look very nice. That's why that you use it in the first place because it's for cosmetic purposes. Now once you get all four sides of that piece marked and you draw your straight line, then you're ready to start applying the finishing tapes. Don't worry about drawing the line on the fabric. It's not going to show after you paint. The paint will cover that nicely. Okay, now she has taken a piece of the finishing tape. Now on those tail pieces, we're going to use the three inch size finishing tape. We also give you two inch finishing tape for other applications, other locations, and even six inch, which is going to be used on the wings. Now she's going to go ahead and tack that down and blow on it on one end. Then she's going to start applying more glue and go all the way down the line. Okay, now she pushes it down real nicely into the glue, and you can see the saturation. Now she flips it over, and she's going to apply the glue to the other side. Now this is going to be the bottom side, because she just did the top side, where she was able to get that edge of the finishing tape nice and straight along the line she drew. Now on the bottom side, it's just not going to be as straight when she's finished with it as it was on the other side. That's just the nature of the finishing tape because it's going around more things by the time it gets to the other side and it just doesn't appear to be as straight. And that's the way you do it. Now she's going to put a piece of the smaller finishing tape, the two inch tape, across the top of the fabric in the area where that center tube is located under the fabric. And she's doing this basically for cosmetic purposes. It's not necessary, but she wants to put it there for appearances, so you can do that too. Remember, we give you two rolls of the two inch seam tape. We give you one roll of the three inch tape and one roll of the six inch tape and that's more than you need to do everything on the airplane. Now ideally she would cut that off just as it goes over that line because there's no need for it to go any further because the three inch tape that she's going to end up putting on that side is going to overlap the two inch tape. 
Now that, again, is just one way of doing it. You may have your own way, and that's fine. There's no carved in stone procedure here. You can do it any number of ways as long as you end up with the same result. This is much like wrapping a Christmas present. It's just a matter of cosmetics. Always check to be sure that the fabric is down tight everywhere before you're finished. Now, if it's sticking up somewhere, then just put some more glue. And a good test of the finishing tapes on all places of the airplane is to take your fingernail or some other uh, sharp object, not too sharp, and kind of run it along underneath, see if you can get it under the edge, like right there, you know, under the uh, seam tape. If you can get your fingernail under that, then it's not down good enough. So you want to put some more glue under those areas where you can get your fingernail under it. Now you can see the finishing tape right there is not real smooth as it's going over that gusset. That's because that's the bottom side of the piece she's covering. And remember what I said, the bottom side is never going to be nice and straight like the top side. So since you can only have the finishing tapes nice and straight on one side or the other, you want to be sure it's the top side where it's going to be showing. Now the two exceptions to that are the rudder and the vertical stabilizer because they are always in the vertical position and you know you're going to see both sides of those control surfaces so there's not really much you can do about getting that straight on both sides. Um, you just have to have it uh, irregular on both sides a little bit or you can still do it where it's straight on one side, but then the other side is going to be a little uh, less straight. Now you can catch a glimpse right there at the top of the picture where she's got that finishing tape right along that line. She actually did two lines because one was wrong. So she's got the finishing tape right along the proper line. Now when you get to the curves, uh, like the corners of a piece, like you see here, it's more difficult than the straight tubes. So you're going to have to do the center part of the seam tape first and get that secured down tight. Then you can go and do both sides of the curve, like you see here. Take a razor blade and cut some of the slack. That's what you call cutting darts. And if you have a wife, she can tell you about cutting darts in fabric but uh, that's just about the only way to get it to go around a corner nice and smooth. And then last but not least, you can use the iron on finishing tapes only if you use it very, very quickly. Just touch the finishing tape momentarily just to get out a wrinkle or something, but don't keep the iron on the finishing tapes because they will shrink. And then if you had them straight once before on one side especially, they won't be straight anymore because they will shrink just like the other fabric. So you see the work she's done here. Uh, she's followed the line and got the fabric tape or seam tape nice and straight along one side. And then around the corners you will have to cut some darts, but there are very few places on the plane where you have that kind of a situation. So see how nice that looks? The last thing you want to do is go back and be sure you have all the holes burned out with the soldering iron. I had marked them previously with a magic marker so I'd know where they were. Except that one, I didn't mark that one, but you could see through there. See how nice the finishing tape looks? That's obviously the top side because she drew the line there, only on the top. And she followed that line. Although there's two lines there, she made a mistake, but she corrected for it. You see how simple this is?